Today, we are going to cover a mistake I made in my previous video, the top 15 most anticipated solo games for 2016. Now, in that video, I covered the Manhattan Project Chain Reaction game. It's actually not an expansion that introduces solo rules at all. It is actually a separate card game with solo rules, which brings it down much, much farther down on my list, unfortunately. So, to make it up to you guys, I'm going to cover my three most anticipated solo expansions of 2016. These include expansions that turn multiplayer games into solo games. So let's begin. Number three is Elder Sign Omens of Ice. Elder Sign is already a solo bowl game, but before now, it was a little too easy, and for some people, including me, it was not as thematic as it could be. You were inside the museum, and while that was fine, it wasn't the most thrilling thing. It didn't replicate the feel of Arkham Horror at all. Of course, nothing can really replicate the feel of Arkham Horror, not even Eldritch Horror, but there you go. However, Elder Sign last year introduced the new expansion, Gates of Arkham, Streets of Arkham, excuse me. And that basically took the game and made it Arkham Horror the Dice Game. And it was a great improvement because you could go to these locations, they did different things to you instead of just being another location and you could get different items from them just by going to that location. And that was very much reflective of a certain mechanic in Arkham Horror. Now, the new expansion, Omens of Ice, indicates that we again are getting going to get another um, Streets of Arkham-like expansion where we replace all of the location decks with new location decks. And this time they focus on the Alaskan environment and the deep ice environment of the Cthulhu Lovecraftian sagas. You get new characters, you get new stuff, and you get a new environment. This is actually reflecting at least one expansion that was made for Eldritch Horror that basically brought in the northern reaches into the um, game. So I look forward to this. I always like expanding my Elder Sign experience. And I know that there's an app and I own the app and I do like playing it and it's a really fast experience, but there are no allies in the app. Allies are another type of card that are really, really powerful and it's just great to have um, like a Professor Armitage around where he gives you extra spells or whatever. That's my brief coverage of the app as well. Number two is Russian Railroads, German Railroads. Now from my understanding, German Railroads not only adds extra stuff, but it also adds a solo opponent in the form of Emil. Um, Emil doesn't care about scoring. He's much more similar to the Ottoma. Well, he's not that similar to the Ottoma in Viticulture. Okay. He just throws up obstacles in front of you to keep you from scoring a high score. So this is going to give you a high score solo game with some obstacles to keep you from reaching as high scores as you otherwise could. I have no idea how this is going to play out. There aren't many reviews that actually concentrate on this solo aspect apart from solitaire games on your table. Geek list entries, I'll have to see for myself. It's actually, um, both of them are being shipped to me as we speak from Miniature Mart, so we'll see what, how that goes. And my number one most anticipated solo expansion for 2016 is actually Orleans Invasion. Now Orleans is an interesting deck 
building game in that you're not building a deck. You're building a bag of tokens. They try to call themselves a bag building game, but that just doesn't communicate to me what this thing is actually doing. So basically you have these tokens that give that represent workers. So this is actually a variable type of workers game. And you put your workers into this bag and every round you draw some workers and you put them down on the various places that they can work at. Um, some of them are more flexible than others. Some of them can go into high learning. Some of them can only do labor. Some of them are army people. And where you place these workers give you special abilities, special opportunities for scoring points, and special ways to move on tracks, uh, do majority type scoring, and all that stuff. Now, I have no idea how much of that is going to actually translate into the solo games. And they're not called, it's not solo rules, it's called solo scenarios or solo challenges and there's not actually much data out there about how these perform in comparison to the multiplayer game. Now I've played Orleans multiplayer and I quite liked it, although not as much as Broom Service in multiplayer. Being able to play this great great game solo would be pretty nice and I think a great addition to any soloist's library who likes who likes Euro games and even if you don't like most Euro games, Orleans is very unique in its approach to the whole build a build a thing of stuff um, without rolling dice all the time as you do in Dice Masters. So far the three modules, the three scenarios, excuse me, appear to be the dignitary where your goal is to get as many citizens as possible in a limited time. Capital Fear Zone, where you're trying to achieve five different objectives in a limited amount of time. And Traveling Salesman, where you're trying to deliver goods to five objectives in a limited amount of time. Now, from what I can tell, the events for Capital Fear Zone at least are not randomized. They are actually set in stone, but that doesn't mean that the game isn't difficult. Because from what I recall of my multiplayer plays of this game, the events can be pretty nasty. Having them in a set order probably means that you're going to just get hit by the worst events that the designer can think of. Um, the Dignitary is supposed to be for easy to medium players, so reports are coming in that it's indeed easy. Um, it has a slightly harder mode, so I haven't heard about that one. Um, Capital Fear Zone and Traveling Salesman seem to be more up to the task of challenging a solo gamer. And sometimes I think that what game designers often miss is that solo games need an extra amount of challenge to them because you're not playing against another player, you're playing against an opponent who should, who is automated, who isn't going to give the pushback another player would give you. And so you, that opponent needs to bring a strong game, present strong challenges and strong obstacles to you. Because otherwise it's just not, it's just gonna be a wet blanket of a, of a thing. One of these days I'm going to cover in a video the top 15 solo opponents that I think are actually good. I mean there are a lot, a lot of games do use these principles so these are more like mechanisms that are good for solo games. So hopefully I will cover that and actually it sounds pretty exciting to me because I get to go through my solo game collection Oh no, I have to play all these solo games. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.